How you doing, Vineyard Kids? It's your old pal, Pastor Chris, here with another edition of The Big God Story, except I'm not really here. You know, this is the first week of a new quarter, which means we're in the summer quarter, and summertime means vacation, right? We're getting out of school. We're going to be going out to the beach, doing all kinds of fun stuff. It's going to be a blast. And so I'm not here. But in just a few minutes, I'm going to introduce you to the man who's going to teach you this week. He is a renowned professor and scientist and scholar, Dr. Albert Einstein. Now, Dr. Einstein, I know it sounds a lot like Einstein. They're two different guys. Einstein was smart, no question about it. But this guy, Dr. Albert Einstein, unbelievable. Anyway, we're going to get to him in just a moment. But before we do that, I want to do the memory verse with you. It's brand new because we're starting a brand new quarter. And our memory verse goes like this. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Isaiah 41, verse 10. All right, we're going to have that memory verse for the next few weeks. I would encourage you to get it memorized, really plant it in your heart. The Bible says that we will hide God's word in our hearts so that we will not sin against him. And this is a great time when you're not in school to memorize some verses that can help you for a lifetime. All right, well, like I said, I'm not here, so I'm going to turn it over to this week's special guest teacher. He is a legend in his own mind. Give it up for Dr. Albert Einstein. Hello, boys and girls. I am Dr. Albert Einstein, and I am excited to be with you today. Now, as we get into our lesson today, we are talking about the power of God. God has amazing power, much like my good friend Arnold Schwarzenegger. We have very much, very much power, but God's power is different, and we want to try to get locked in to the power of God. So, here's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about simple circuits and open and closed. We're going to do a little science and then we're going to turn it over to a lesson that you'll never forget. You ready? Here we go. This is a simple circuit. You can see the battery, a D battery. You can see the light bulb and currently the light bulb is not on. Why is that? Well, because if you follow the method, the battery goes to the switch and the battery goes to the light, and the switch goes to the light. But there's a gap right here that keeps the circuit from being closed. Right now it's an open circuit, meaning it is not complete, but in a moment I am going to close the circuit and watch the light bulb very closely. Right here we go. Look at that. The light bulb is on. Off. On. Off. On. Now, what makes the light bulb turn on? Well, you could say it's the D battery. The D battery is the source of power. But when I pick up this little switch, it doesn't matter how much power is in the battery. Now, what matters is that the power from the battery cannot get to the light bulb. You see, God is the source of great power in the universe and in you. And he wants to be in touch with you, connected to you. He wants to close the circuit to your life so that your power, your light can shine brightly. The Bible says that we should let our light shine brightly before men so that they may see our good works and glorify our Father who is in heaven. So let's learn more about the power of of God. Take a look. It's impossible. It is utterly outrageous that a man like Peter could change himself so drastically, like a caterpillar metamorphosizing into a butterfly. Why, it's preposterous. But it is a conundrum. 
Why isn't this the same Peter who walked along a watery Galilean avenue toward his savior only to lose faith part way and sink deep, deep, deep down only to be engulfed by the salty, raging seas all because of his lack of faith? And isn't this the same Peter who, when asked by a servant girl whether he knew this savior whom he had been following for the last three years of his life, didn't he deny knowing him? Nay, he denied having ever even heard of him while this Lord was on trial for his very life. Peter plus some thing equals bold man. What I ask could that something be? What I ask is the source of this man's drastic change. Oh, dear. Hello, friends. <laughs> How long have you been standing there? Oh, wow, he's in Bowie. <laughs> in my mental wanderings, I've completely lost track of time and forgot about our little meeting. Why don't you have a seat, please? Now, I suppose the appropriate thing to do would be to introduce myself, but I'm sure you're quite familiar with me from my directorial work. <laughs> no? Oh, dear. Well, of course, you have read about me or seen me interviewed on the evening news. <laughs> well, I <laughs> know. You're not joking. Um, well then, it is my pleasure to introduce to you that I am Professor Milton. Welcome to my humble yet quite efficient lab. By day, I am a director of artistic films, but by night, I act as a professor of the sciences. Now, some of you may be wondering about a little outburst that you might have noticed a moment ago. You see, when I am not in my lab curing the consternation known as the common cold, I often like to read the Bible. And as I read it, I often uncover deep mysteries or wisdom, and something stirs inside my soul that causes me to ask God the big questions. And today's big question comes from chapter four in the book of Acts, a chapter detailing the disciple Peter's debut as a bold, intrepid preacher to thousands. Now, Forgive me for saying so, but the Peter that I've read about in the Bible prior to this event, well, he's a bit coward. Not exactly the kind of man who would preach about his faith in public. So how could this have happened? We know that something mysterious must have happened to Peter to make it possible. That something is represented here. That something represents the source of Peter's change. Hmm, perhaps I could use some help in solving this equation. Ulysses, please cease whatever inconsequential thing with which you are currently engaged and join me over here in the lab. Ooh, I can hear him coming now. <laughs> oh, well, hello there, Ulysses. So good to see you. Yes, quite good to see you. <laughs> are you well? <laughs> good, good, glad to hear that. Now, Ulysses. I have been working on an equation since half past 10 this morning and I am simply getting nowhere. I was wondering if you would lend your supreme figuring outing abilities. Would you do that for us? Excellent. Here's the equation. Why, Ulysses, that's brilliant. Excuse me. <laughs> Ulysses has just reminded me that there are many things in this world that change quite drastically, but we simply fail to notice them. Perhaps if you and I together take a few moments to notice them, we will better understand the source of this drastic change. Now, on the count of three, we are all going to clap one time. Are you ready? All right. One, two, three. Ulysses, you went on two. And clearly you can't clap. So, Stop trying. Beep, boop, just boop, put your arms at your side. You, you're making us look ridiculous. Just put your... Beep, boop. Thank you. I'll, I'll do the clapping. You just stand there and look boxy. Boop, boop. All right. One, two... This scene is a wonder of natural transformation. 
You see, if I were to place this seed upon concrete, it would not grow. Nothing would happen. Not a zilch diddly squat would occur. Yet, if I were to place this same seed into rich soil, like so, <clears throat> Ulysses, shovel. Then, if we were to water that exact same seed, it would miraculously sprout into a leafy green plant. Ulysses, boop, 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 lovely boop, specimen, boop. thank you. You see, each seed has a perfectly thin coating that surrounds the outside. When you place the seed into the ground and water seeps into the ground to wet the seed, the work of the water plus the work of the sun allow the seed's skin to expand until it finally bursts. It sends roots down deep into the soil where the roots are nourished, allowing the plant to grow. It's phenomenal. It's, 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 it's bonkers, if you really think about it. <laughs> but unfortunately, uncovering the mystery of a seed's ability to sprout into a leafy green plant does not help us uncover the source of Peter's boldness. I suppose it's time to move on. Are you ready, my friends? Ah, the kitchen. A wonderland of chemistry and scrumptiousness. You see, every single thing that we eat is really a combination from a variety of different sources. Take, for instance, this cake. Thank you, Ulysses. This wonderful, delicious, lovely looking cake. Now, I think we all understand that this cake did not begin looking like a cake. Instead, it is the sum total of a number of different ingredients, the true source of this cake. And those are water, sugar, flour, butter, and eggs. So, eggs, sugar, water, flour, butter, and heat are the sources of the cake. It's amazing, it's stupendous, and it's delicious. Alas, Ulysses, I am now convinced that no amount of worldly knowledge will help us uncover the source of Peter's true transformation. Land sakes, I'm late for an extra appointment. Ulysses, quick, to the lab! <laughs> oh dear. Ulysses, this is the wrong place. We'll have to try again. <laughs> we haven't gone anywhere. Oh, one more time. <laughs> uh, nothing. Ulysses, where have you taken us? We were already late enough. When you do things like this, it makes it very hard to trust you. Well, at least someone's thought to make tea. Oh, hello! <laughs> you did find us after all. That's wonderful. Um, I was waiting in the lab for 20 minutes. Oh dear. I'm very sorry. What's that on the board? Well, that, that is a, a great mystery that has been plaguing me for quite some time, but don't concern yourself with it. It's far too complicated for someone of your age. <laughs> well, at least try to explain. Very well. That is what is called an equation. And that particular equation has to do with a remarkable man named Peter. Oh, Peter the Disciple. The one who walked with Jesus. Why, yes, Penny, you've hit the nail on the head. <laughs> yes, that very same Peter who doesn't seem competent enough or courageous enough to preach to a crowd of thousands as he does in Acts 4. Have you tried reading Acts 1 through 3? What are you looking at? No, I, I don't suppose I have. Well, there's your problem, Professor. Chapter 2 explains all of Peter's transformation. Ulysses, a Bible. <laughs> it begins during Jesus' time on earth. You see, Jesus promised that he'd go back to heaven to live with his Father, God, and that once he did so, he would send them the Holy Spirit. He even promised the disciples that it would be better when he left them because the Holy Spirit would be so great. The Holy Spirit would be with believers at all times because he would live inside their hearts. Wait, now Penny, you mean to tell me that the Spirit of God himself lives within the followers of Jesus? <laughs> it's amazing. Oh, but look at this. The Holy Spirit living inside the believers. Why, he gave them, gave them the power of God himself to tell everyone the good news of Jesus Christ. What? Bingo, 
Ulysses. This is what we've been looking for all day. The Holy Spirit is the source of Peter's power. His boldness, his courage. It's right there. You see, as Jesus returned to heaven, he told the disciples to wait in Jerusalem. He knew they weren't able to spread God's story without the power of the Holy Spirit. So the disciples waited. But they didn't just wait, they celebrated. They were so excited to know that Jesus was raised from the dead that they praised and worshiped God continuously. Blimey, what an incredible, indescribable state of affairs that must have been. Oh, how wonderful it would have been to be there because then it says that in the midst of all of this continuous, joyful praise and worship, something completely new and totally unexpected happened. The Bible says that a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. And all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit enabled them. Isn't that amazing, Professor? It is! Keep reading. <laughs> Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together, confused, because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, How is it that we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own languages? Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, What does this mean? <gasps> and that's when Peter rose and addressed the crowd. And as many as 3,000 people were saved that day because of the work the Holy Spirit did in Peter. Eureka! <laughs> Keep on going. Oh, oh, because it keeps getting better. All the new believers, they came together every day to worship and to celebrate. And more and more came to believe in Jesus and receive the Holy Spirit. And the new believers, they prayed together and ate together and worshiped Jesus together. Isn't that just such a beautiful picture? Boop, boop. <laughs> And just like the disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit, we, as believers, are also filled with the Holy Spirit today. We can pray together, eat together, and worship together. Most of all, we can trust that God will transform our lives by His Holy Spirit into lives that will glorify Him. What fantastic news! Oh, but Penny, I do have some bad news. I haven't forgotten why you came here today. We're still going to need to work on your homework. I left it in the lab. Oh, well, that's not a problem. One, two, three. What an amazing story of God's power. Listen, you and me, we have access to power, power much greater than the power necessary to light this light bulb. But when we sin, when we ignore God, when we allow ourselves to be less than connected to Him, when we break the circuit, well, the light goes out. And this world needs light. Your light, my light, the light given to us from God like never before. If you don't mind, I'm going to pray for you. And then we will be finished for today. Bow your heads, close your eyes, and I'm going to reconnect the power for just a moment. Dear God, we love you. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for the opportunity to be connected to you and to be conduits, to be uh, cables, to be uh, wires by which your power can come through us and shine into the world around us. God, we thank you for the possibilities that are found in the light that you have blessed us to shine. May we do our best this week to shine your light wherever we go. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Take care. Chris will be back next week.